Aggressive Inline is an extreme sports game developed in 2002 by Z-Axis Games, who had previously worked on the Dave Mira Freestyle BMX series. By the time they made this game, it was obvious that Z-Axis were burned out after making three Dave Mira games in just two years, and were desperate to try something new. Why else would these developers go from making games about one of the most physically restrictive types of X games to one of the least restrictive? This desire for change becomes blatantly obvious once the game loads, as the new Z-Axis title card contains a quote from the German idealist philosopher George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel. Nothing great in the world has ever been accomplished without passion. Unfortunately, passion alone is no substitute for quality. While innovative and fun during its first few hours and enjoyable in short spurts, Aggressive Inline quickly becomes a chore thanks to glaring bugs, poor visuals, and a lack of substantive content. I am the ghost of Inliner's past. I perished in the ravine of doom. Doom! Aggressive Inline was made on a significantly lower budget than the Dave Mira games, and it shows. Even by 2002 standards, the graphics are blurry and ill-defined. Though at least the game runs at a solid 60 frames per second most of the time, which is fairly important for an extreme sports game where timing is of the essence. The level design is also uninspired, with only the humorous movie set and neon-lit airport providing any sense of creativity beyond grey, semi-realistic backgrounds. The soundtrack is also lacking. While some of this is no doubt due to budget concerns, there are good bands out there whose music could have been licensed on the cheap. Instead, Aggressive Inline chose to use the likes of Real Big Fish, The Ataris, and Hoobastank. In particular, the choice to prioritize Real Big Fish's sellout seems like a very cynical move, given how closely the song resembles Superman by Goldfinger, the iconic lead song from the original Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Aggressive Inline has a fairly standard set of gameplay options. Career mode, free skate, timed run, multiplayer, and a create a park mode. Unfortunately, the career mode lacks the tournament competitions that break up the action, meaning that there's no actual end to the career mode unless the player completes every objective on every level, slowing the pace to a crawl. Even more puzzling, rewards for beating career objectives mostly consist of extra loading screens or new parts for the park editor, which don't feel very rewarding. To give credit where credit is due, Aggressive Inline shakes up the standard extreme sports formula in several interesting ways. Most of these innovations focus on career mode. These include experience point systems for skill attributes and flyby cutscenes to hint at what to do for certain objectives. The game also likes to experiment with regular objectives by giving them small stories from NPCs. For instance, there's one character who shows up at every level asking you to perform a certain trick at a certain location because he wants a good photograph out of it. Okay, kid, don't hold nothing back. What a shot! Hello, Pulitzer! Aggressive Inline also gets creative with his gameplay. Since rollerblades are strapped to the athlete's feet, there's no way to perform kickflips like on a bike or skateboard, leaving one extra button free on your typical extreme sports control scheme. Aggressive Inline uses this button for special context-sensitive actions such as leveling out when overshooting a halfpipe, hitching a ride on the back of a vehicle, vaulting over objects, and swinging on poles. The game also places a strong emphasis on fakies, or cess slides as they're called here. At any time, the player can press R2 to start skating backwards, and the cess slide will count as a trick in their combo string. It can even be used alongside manuals to chain together combos while in a halfpipe. Alas, despite this creativity, Aggressive Inline wastes its potential by not exploring these ideas beyond their servers level. Even worse, Aggressive Inline is glitchy, and feels like it's still in the beta stage. It's not uncommon to fall through the map, land tricks that were obvious fails, or vice versa, 
grind on nothing, or fly through the air as you perform a normally stationary hand plant. Most egregiously, however, the game falls victim to an obvious exploit with its grinding system, where the player can repeatedly mash the X and triangle buttons to increase their combo multiplier when grinding rails. And since in career mode you gain XP for an attribute as you use it, it can be child's play to literally grind for experience in the grinding, jumping, and manuals attributes, all because Z-Axis games forgot to include a cooldown timer on the grind button after jumping from a rail. Now, as a speedrunner, I normally love these kinds of exploits, but in a game like this, it just makes me sad for what could have been an interesting experience. In a way, I feel sorry for aggressive inline. Z-Axis Games clearly wanted to break the mold with a few clever twists of the old Tony Hawk formula. It's a real shame that these original ideas, while excellent on paper, feel half-finished and aren't fleshed out very well. I wanted to like this game a lot more than I did, and while I certainly had fun with it at first, I eventually realized how shallow and fragile the game truly was, and lamented what could have been. Aggressive Inline gets two multi-million point combos out of five. So, have you played Aggressive Inline? And what did you think of it? Make sure to drop a comment below, and don't forget to leave feedback, subscribe to my channel, and if you're feeling really generous, why not contribute to my Patreon page? Join me next time, where we'll be taking down the Mafia in a stylish trench coat. See you later, folks. And why